Hi everyone. Welcome to our next lesson in probability. Today we're going to be focusing on experimental probability and using probability to make predictions. The materials you're going to want to have handy for today's lesson are your math notebook or some loose leaf paper, a pencil or pen, and your calculator. If you need to, please pause at this time to go get those materials and you can resume once you're ready. All right. In our past lessons, we have been primarily focusing on what is called theoretical probability. We defined probability as the number of ways an event can occur, can occur over the total number of possible outcomes. That's called theoretical probability because that's what should happen in theory. So we know that probability is a likelihood and it is not an exact amount, but theoretical probability is what should happen in theory. Today, we're gonna to be shifting gears a little bit and focusing on experimental probability. Experimental probability is when you actually perform an experiment and you calculate your results. We find experimental probability by taking the number of times the event occurs and putting that over the total number of trials performed. If you have not already, please jot these two formulas down. If needed, you can pause the video at this time so you can get that information into your notes. You can resume when you're ready to go. Okay, you guys, we're gonna take a look at this example. The example reads that Amanda used a standard deck of 52 cards and selected a card at random. She recorded the suit of the card she picked and then replaced the card. The results are in the table below. So it looks to me like Amanda randomly picked a diamond card five, seven times. She picked a heart nine times. She picked a spade five, 10, 11 times. And clubs was only randomly picked three times. Okay, the first question that we're gonna take a look at is what is the experimental probability that Amanda will select a heart. So just a quick reminder from our definition, experimental probability is gonna be found by looking at the ratio of the number of times the event occurs. So how many times a heart was selected? So probability of selecting a heart. That occurred nine times in Amanda's trials out of the total number of trials altogether. Now, they didn't tell us in the problem how many trials she did, but we can figure that out by adding together all of the um, things that happened, how many things happened. So seven plus nine is 16, and 11 plus three is 14, and 16 plus 14 is 30, which means that Amanda did 30 trials altogether. Remember that if we can simplify our probability fraction, we should. I notice that I can divide both of these by three. And the experimental probability that Amanda selects a heart is three out of 10. Now, just to compare that back to what we have been working on, theoretical probability. Um, remember that theoretical probability is the um, number of ways that an event can occur over the total possible outcomes. So the theoretical probability of selecting a heart is 13 because there are 13 hearts in a standard deck of cards out of 52 possible cards altogether. Now, this can be simplified. So the theoretical probability of selecting a heart at random would be one out of four. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we know how to calculate probability in two different ways, we're gonna be using proportions to make predictions with our probabilities. So if you know the probability of an event, you can use proportions to predict the number of times that an event will occur during an experiment. We're gonna take a look at a couple examples together. All right, in our first example, Donna performed an experiment 
with selecting marbles out of a bag. She replaces the marbles when she's done. She found that the experimental probability of choosing a green marble was two out of five. If Donna performs the experiment 400 times, predict how many times she will choose a green marble. All right, you guys, so if she found that the probability of selecting a green marble was two fifths, what that really means is that she picked a green marble two times out of every five times that she performed the experiment. We can set up a proportion using that probability and putting that equal to another ratio where we try to figure out how many times she will choose green out of how many times she does the experiment. You can remember from previous lessons how we solve uh, a proportion using cross products. So we can multiply five times the X value, two times the 400, which means that five X is equal to 800. We're then gonna use an inverse operation of dividing by five so we can isolate our variable. And that's going to give us X equals 160. Okay, now this is a word problem, so I'm gonna write my answer in the form of a sentence. What this answer really means is that if Donna performed this marble experiment 400 times, she would pick a green marble around 160 times. So there's my answer in the form of a sentence. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna take a look at a different example. Let's say that the probability of landing on the blue section of this spinner is 1 fourth. If we spin the spinner 68 times, predict how many of those times we will land on the blue section. So since we know that the probability of landing on the blue section is equal to 1 fourth, that means out of every four spins, we'll land on blue once. Then if we spin the spinner 68 times, that means we are doing 68 trials and we're trying to figure out how many of those 68 are going to land on the blue section. So here's the proportion I can set up and using my cross products, I'm going to say four times X is equal to one times 68 which means 4x equals 68. My inverse operation is going to be to divide by four to isolate my variable. My fours are gonna cancel each other out here and x will be equal to 17. Go ahead and pause the video and write a sentence about what that answer actually means in this problem. All right, the sentence I wrote was, if we spin the spinner 68 times, we will land on the blue section approximately 17 times. Your, dance, your answer does not need to be exact word for word, um, but you should be stating the answer that we calculated 17 times, and you should state that we did the trial 68 times. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just wanna warn you about a common mistake that students tend to make. Make sure that you know if you are supposed to be finding the theoretical probability or the experimental probability. And you can know that by making sure that you read your problem very carefully. Last but not least, just a little funny from the office. Um, hope you guys have a great day. Please check your teacher's documents for your current assignment.